Okay. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another stream with Offensive Security. My name is Siren, and today we'll be doing the DC-9 machine. Uh, that's Delta Charlie 9. It's available on VulnHub. That's V-U-L-N-H-U-B. And uh, if you missed this Twitch stream, no worries. Watching this on YouTube, go ahead and skip to the 30-minute mark, and that is where we will begin. In the meantime, we're going to allow 30 minutes for people to kind of just trickle in, uh, ask some questions, comments, concerns, if they have any, and uh, then we'll get down to business. I do see that we have some people in the chat already. Green Jam 94, welcome. Hola, hola. Hola, hola. Let me go ahead and grab a link to DC9 on Vulnhub, and I'll link you guys that in the chat. There you go. Yes, yes, it is time for the final, you guys. This is the last one in the DC series. Don't worry, the, the streaming will continue. I promise it will very much continue. But the DC series, this is the last one. This is the ninth one in the series, and it is coming to an end. So uh, this one is going to actually be pretty fun. I think we're going to enjoy it a lot. Green Jam 94 says, finally got the VM ready this time. So going to see if I can keep up instead of just watching. Heck yeah. Welcome aboard, buddy. Glad to have you. Welcome aboard. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, no need to be shy. You can go ahead and ask those in the chat. Uh, I am here to assist you in any which way I possibly can. Hey, PR4PZZ says, got my first job in information security, particularly in application security, so yay for me. Cheers, buddy. Congratulations. That's a, that's a hot place to be, I tell you. Uh, first time chat from VMC9. Best advice for getting into the try harder mentality? Uh, that's a good question. I would say think like the intruder as much as you can. Think like the intruder who is persistent and does not want to give up uh, under any circumstance. That, that is the best way I think I can quick and short, you know, the short and dirty version of try harder uh, or the try harder mentality. Try thinking like the intruder, the one that doesn't give up, the one that keeps going, the one that keeps persisting. And um, you know, that's the best advice I can give on that. First time chat from Kazaris says congratulations. Yes, yes, congratulations on the AppSec job. Um, Kazarik, if you have a question regarding a retake for an examination, uh, check out this email here. It's challenges at offensivesecurity.com, and we'll get in uh, touch with you. We'll get back to you uh, regarding any retakes or if you have any issues uh, scheduling your retake.
so it's a Friday. Did everybody have a good week? I know I did. I had a great week and uh, got a lot done. It was very productive. Um, but it is Friday now, and we're going into the weekend, boys and girls. We're going into the weekend, and uh, we're going in with the last machine of the DC series. Just a guy, one through seven, says, Hey, Siren, glad to hear this. Well, glad that you're here. It is a pleasure to have you, just a guy. It's a pleasure. Let's see who else. So don't be shy. Even if you are unfamiliar with who or what offensive security is, that's fine. Um, if you have any questions, I will make sure to ask. Well, excuse me, if you, make sure to ask so that I can answer for you. Um, and I will do just that. We'll be starting, if I check the clock, in about 20, 25 minutes. And then uh, that'll be the hard start. Uh, I won't be sticking around much, unfortunately, because I need to wake up in about six hours from now. Aha, gotcha. Yeah, got to watch that sleep schedule, dude. Sleep schedule's more important. This is the bubble says hello. Welcome, this is the bubble. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, so even if you miss the stream, don't worry. Like, you can still just skip to the 30-minute mark on the YouTube uh, upload, and you'll, you'll be able to watch it, no problem. Absolutely. OpCop says hello. Welcome, OpCop. very excited about this machine. There's a lot of great stuff that's going to happen. I um, think I've done DC9 a couple of times, uh, but this one includes just a lot of really good attacks. In fact, one of my favorite attacks is included in this. Um, Game Exhibitor says, hey, it's the first time here. My first time here. Can you give your intro? Uh, yeah. So my name is Siren. And I work with Offensive Security. I'm a content developer. I'm a streamer and an educator uh, for them. And uh, that's pretty much my intro in a nutshell, bud. If you have any specific questions, I mean, feel free to ask. I'll, I'll, I'll do my best to answer. Uh, ALK Jab says, I'm having issues getting VNV set up in Cali. Be piffing tools and droop scan from having issues in the future. Tips to do the best on this. Um... If you're having issues, man, I'd love to see the error message. HexOAC says, are there any unique tools we will need installed? Um, not particularly. Nothing other than what comes with Kali. Um, let's see here. Just a guy, one through seven, says, you're literally the only streamer that uploads its Twitch recordings on YouTube, like, hours after the stream. I appreciate this big time. My pleasure, man. My pleasure. I am, I'm here to help. Um, yeah, for DC9 is savage, my friend. DC9 is a savage machine. It's absolutely savage. It's brutal. It can be a massacre, man. Absolutely. And that's the one that we're going to be tackling today, so it's going to be a lot of fun. Tell your friends, because it, it's going down here in about 20 minutes. Game Exhibitor says, no questions. I already got my OSCP. I'm happy with it. Just here to see what's going on. Smiley face, good job. Thank you, Game Exhibitor. Congrats on your OS, congrats on your OSCP. Um, and uh, yeah, just if, if you just wanted to sit back, chill, and enjoy the stream, um, or perhaps pursue further certifications with us, we also have that available. Uh, we have many more than just the OSCP. Um, but congratulations very much, like mucho, very much uh, congratulations. HexOAC says, I have a few friends that I go um, at Hack the Box with, and I've shared your streams, but they never make it. Darn. <laughs> hey, man, you know, you can't help everybody, right? OpCop says, I want to learn exploit vulns that are not easy. 
what I need to learn, is it program language? So um, we teach you in our PWK or Pen 200 course um, how to take apart various, uh, a plethora of payloads to move around the code. Um, some of our exercises are even catered around this and, uh, you know, making things work. So I would suggest the Pen 200. Um, as far as your programming is concerned, having an understanding of Bash and Python uh, before you jump in is going to help you tremendously. Uh, if you, I think the three things that we try to hit the bar on for the prereqs or prerequisites for the Pen 200 are going to be Bash, Python, and TCP IP. I don't think we've changed that in many years. So, I mean, not too much, and you can, you can dive right in, man. If you come in with as a web developer or a Linux systems administrator, Windows domain administration, whatever, it's going to help you for sure. Um, let's see, PR4PZZ uh, says, would you agree that hack the box, easy boxes are more like medium or hard ones in the OSCP labs? Hard for me to say, man. Uh, I personally did, I think I had like a private account for HTB for a little while. Um, but I, th that's a hard question for me to answer. Um, so I, I can't really confirm that one for you. I'm sorry. But I do know that uh, the machines that we have in the demilitarized zone or the DMZ uh, for the PWK are exceptional, to say the least. Uh, we, we put extreme amounts of, and copious amounts of effort into those machines, into their quality, um, and uh, some of them are even like trophies to us, so uh, we care very much about those. But I don't know if there's any HTB machines that are really going to compare. Uh, potentially, I don't, I don't doubt it. Um, 54 views, welcome. Welcome, guys, welcome. Feel free to ask your questions, comments, concerns. Here is an, a link again in the chat. Uh, if you want to copy and paste that, including the comma 412 forward slash into your web browser in a new tab, it will resolve and you will uh, be able to download Delta Charlie 9. This is the final one of the DC series. Uh, Hex OAC says the HTB boxes have different challenges uh, to that seen in the Offsec Labs. Some are Android. True. True enough. I guess I'm just trying to uh, impart the methodology that I know, at least works, that you can expound upon, you know, that allows and permits for room for growth. Um, and because to me, that's what this is all really about. Uh, penetration testing and security auditing is infinite potential. So it's a science. So, I mean, if I can set you with a good foundation, if offensive security can set you with an amazing foundation, then I think we did our job. Um, Dev A Star says, had to leave early last week, excited to stick around this week. Welcome, Dev A Star. No worries, if you miss it, you can catch it on YouTube, buddy. It's all being recorded. Uh, I'll toss it up on YouTube a couple hours after the stream here. So no problem. This is the last one we're doing. It's, well, not the last one we're doing, excuse me. Uh, this is the last Delta Charlie or DC machine that we're gonna be doing. I think I may start the Keoptrix series next. Um, not too sure. We'll see, because I, I don't think we have those archived on YouTube yet, and we got to get those in there. Um, but other than that, yeah, I mean, we're making good progress. Good headway. If you have a machine suggestion from TJ Knoll's OSCP prep list, just shoot it to me in a DM. Uh, but please include the link to the machine on Bonehub. Uh, or PG Play, or whatever it may be, um, you know, specify either or. That way I can just quickly look at it. All right, it is looking like 4.44, so 4.45, about 15 minutes. 15 minutes, and then we'll hard start on DC9.
Cybersex says, enjoyed last week, to be honest. You confirmed my methodologies. Thank you for that, Siren. Hey, yo. Well, man, my pleasure. My pleasure, my pleasure. If I can confirm any of your theories regarding methodologies or any of that, my goodness, you're on the right road. Keep it up. Keep it up. Uh, so, Christy is raiding with a party of seven. Welcome, Christy, uh, and their uh, group. I see that we just jumped up. So if you're unfamiliar with who or what offensive security is, that's totally cool. Um, if, I'll just answer any questions that you guys might have. Um, PR4, oh yeah, good catch, PR4. It does say DC8, doesn't it? This needs to say DC9. Let's make a fix on that. And go ahead and update or save that out. Done, okay. So it should say DC9 walkthrough with Siren now, is what it should say. And if there's any issues with my microphone, just let me know. I'll try and adjust it. It does say that? Okay, cool. To think this all started a year ago in our Discord server, streaming how to do machines and the chit chat. Those were good times. And look at where we are today, chat. We've grown. Looks and sounds good? Awesome. Thank you, Green Jam. Green, green, <laughs> green Jam 94. Thank you, buddy. Um, well, you, what you're paying for is that lab time. You're paying for all that access, just a guy. So, separately, I, I don't think so, no. I think you, uh, it's, uh, the last I checked, I mean, when you pay uh, for the certification via Learn One, Learn Unlimited, or whatever it might be, um, then you can, you have access to the machines, to the course, to the material, um, but it, lab extensions, I'm not sure. I know we used to do that, that's a fair question. Um, I would reach out to orders at offensive-security.com and they could probably better answer that for you. Uh, just a reminder to everyone that Friday's offsec office hour is a must every single Friday. I see what you did there. Yeah, I could not make it today. Um, I apologize for that, guys. I could not make it to the office hour. I hope it went well. Um, did we have a lot of good talks? A lot of good questions? <laughs> Philibo says, first time chat, first time getting to catch one of these live. This is going to be great. You bet. It's going to be awesome. Uh, this is the bubble says, can you share with us some blogs that you follow uh, to be up to date in CyberSec? I certainly can. Uh, just a guy says, oh, okay, we'll do. Thank you, Siren. My pleasure, dude. Yeah, just reach out to uh, orders and they'll get you a more uh, correct answer, probably a more up to date answer. Um, let's see here. This is office hour with Siren. Yeah, I guess you could say that. JX Crow, welcome back. JX Crow says, hi, Siren. Happy Friday. How was the week? It was wonderful and productive. Lots of research, lots of development, uh, lots of continuation of projects. Things are, things are moving forward in good directions. So thank you for asking, buddy. Thank you for asking. Okay, da, 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 da. yeah, so can I share some of the blogs that I follow to be up to date in CyberSec? Yeah, um, I actually, if you go, this is, a, this is the bubble, if you go and check out the Wireside Text channel, um, and specifically there's a pinned message where I just, you know, littered the page with everything that I could, you know, like a mind map, if you will, if you've ever heard of a mind map before. And in there, I have a couple of blogs, websites, you know, uh, like nist.gov, mitra.org, um, CVE details, um, ZD or zero day.net. Um, yeah, our netsec is not bad either. Um, if there's anything dropped on Twitter, I mean, regardless of whether or not you use social media, you're going to hear about it like day of. So. Yeah, those those are those are pretty much uh, the big ones I can think of.
Hey, my pleasure. No worries. Good question. Good question. Are my cats around? They are. Uh, one turned into a loaf of bread. I don't know how they managed to do that. Um, but they're just a loaf of bread now. Uh, the other's kind of just chilling. Where are you, Cosmos? Ah, uh, he's up in his own chair. Uh, yeah. The cats are around. They're just... They're just loafing, I guess. <laughs> Also, for anybody else who's ready to fire up the machine, make sure as a reminder that you have your uh, environment variables exported and ready to go. Guys, the IP environment variable, the URL, uh, with, with a trailing forward slash and without for files and directories, respectively. Um, but yeah, IP, URL, make sure those environment variables are ready to go. It'll help. It's looking like another eight minutes, seven minutes, and then we'll be a uh, hard start. Hi, is it possible to use manual SQL injection if it is required today during the walkthrough? I know it needs to be more time than a, a SQL map, but in the exam, we can't use SQL map and we are limited with time. That's what we're here to teach you in the Pen 200. If you take our course or the PWK, uh, more specifically, if you really want to get into SQL injection, uh, I would say take my course. Uh, well, I'm co-author of it, uh, but take uh, the OSWA, that's Offensive Security Web Assessor, and we have plenty of uh, fun and uh, very useful <laughs> uh, SQL uh, material. We even have like topic machines, case studies, you name it. Um, it will help you a lot. But no, for the sake of time, I do have to stick with a SQL map for these videos. They get to be very lengthy. And SQL injection in and of itself, I mean, the premise I can teach you with a single, you know, with a single apostrophe or something like this, or a double, or, you know, spacing for a union join, whatever it might be. But uh, building on from there, an enumeration of a database is an entirely separate thing. Um, Cozy Electricity says, is that exam available now? Yeah, well, it'd be more like, it'd be more like a particular, particular did I, if I pronounce that connect correctly, says apostrophe or one equals one pound sign, I would raise you an apostrophe or one is equal to apostrophe one apostrophe space dash dash space dash is a termination statement. I would raise you that. Um, it's more universally rec recognizable. Port Swicker has some good resources on web attacks. I still plan on the OSWA. Heck yeah. Heck yeah, man. Um, it's it's an amazing course. I'm so proud of it. Like, we're proud of it. Off offensive Security is proud of it. It's gotten an incredible feedback. Students are loving it. They're actually having fun, you know, and that's, that's, it's so important. So I'm glad that we could kind of channel that into the, into the certification. Uh, first time chat from Schrodenbug says, hi, how are you doing? I'm doing all right, Schrodenbug. Glad to have you, buddy.
Chesapeake Joe says, just joined what course? We were talking about the OSWA, uh, Offensive Security Web Assessor. Particularly awesome course, Chesapeake Joe. Should really check that one out. Uh, Particle de Dayu says, can you tell me the name of the box, please? Yes. Um, here is the link. It is DC9, uh, Delta Charlie 9. And that is what we are going to be starting in approximately four minutes. You're welcome. No problem. JX Crow says, how often do you stop to wonder about security issues? For example, SQLI uh, that have been known for as long as I've lived, still often even the simplest things are so poorly done that it doesn't even count as a try. Um, when it comes to SQL injection, if there's a form of input, I'm going to be using it. I'm going to be fuzzing it. I'm going to be abusing it with my own custom uh, word lists. Uh, that way I can be timely and efficient. I'm going to be analyzing the response length, the number of lines returned, the number of bytes returned, um, this, these kinds of things to look to see if there's variation, potentiality for SQL injection, or just manually when I'm browsing through the application through UX input, that is to say end user input. So in web application assessment, you know, we have UX input is like user-facing input, logins, passwords, email forms, submissions, bios, profiles, comments, whatever it might be. Um, and then other forms of input might include get data in the uh, query string of a URI or something like this, or the um, it could be any of the headers that you choose. Um, from a particular request, totally random, but your personality and demeanor remind me of Katie Bobs from Sirius XM. Just fun to hang out and chat and learn. <laughs> I don't know who Katie Babs is, uh, but now you you got me feeling like I got a doppelganger out there, and that's kind of cool. So, heck yeah, um, Katie Dabs from Sirius XM Radio. Uh, Particular Dio says, by the way, you can call Particule, if that's okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, personality and voice. Okay, so my personality and voice. Uh, I'll definitely take a look at Katie Babs. Let me, new tab, Katie Babs. Uh, wow, okay. So this is like a, a radio personality, Sirius XM. All right. Awesome, awesome. Uh, Cozy Electricity says, by the way, past the OSCP over the weekend, your streams definitely helped me approach it in a more poised way and provided a lot of value for Linux post-exploitation, so thank you for the great content. My friend, congratulations on behalf of Offensive Security on becoming an Offensive Security Certified Professional. Big deal. Congratulations there, buddy. Noob44P, welcome back. Another regular. Plenty of regulars here for this last uh, installation of Delta Charlie, so it's going to be good, guys. Noob44P is here as well, and it is 4.59. I'm going to watch the clock so we hard start at 5 p.m. Eastern, and uh, we'll get rocking and rolling, man, as always. I know I use that phrase a, a lot, but, you know, there are just some things that... Thank you and thank you. My pleasure. Thank you uh, for being here and thank you guys for the feedback and thank you for the kind words. It really does mean pretty much everything and uh, I'll keep it going. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you just gotta rock and roll. Uh, one person says, left work early just to check this out. Well, welcome, Nola WebDev. Um, we're gonna be hitting up some web applications here today, um, but it is 5 p.m. And I'm going to switch over to streaming as my source. You can see here I've echoed out the IP and the URL environment variable. Same thing for the bottom terminal, the IP and the URL environment variable. The only difference is the URL in the bottom has a trailing forward slash indicating that we'll be looking for directories. 
No trailing forward slash for fuzzing up here means we're not looking for directories, we're looking for files. So let's go ahead before we do any of that and let's do an nmap p dash for 65,535 ports. Simple scripts, simple uh, script, simple scripts. That would be SC and dash SV for a service version or a TCP banner grab. At the target IP, tack tack open because we're only interested in open ports. This is a local machine. So that means that what we're scanning right now is going to be very low latency and it'll be done quicker than I can finish that, finish that sentence. So it looks like we only have port 80 uh, on this one. <laughs> but, you know, that is what it is. Uh, you know, we're just going to go ahead and copy that, get that over to Cherry Tree, put that in the notes, do our highlighting nonetheless, you know, stay, stay rigid here. HTTP is the service. Um, it's Apache 2.438 Debian, or Debian, excuse me, is confirmed as our target OS. We'll put that up at the top, Debian. Um, and it looks like example.com staff details welcome. So for this, we're just going to put 80 HTTP. Um, kind of keep it simple, you know what I mean? And there it is. There's the service protocol, etc. Uh, need to switch. Nola Web says need to switch from my phone to my laptop. No problem, buddy. No problem. All right, so what we're going to do uh, today is what are we, what are we going to, in fact, you guys, this is the last one of DC9. What are we going to utilize? What tools are we going to utilize on 80? Uh, for our preliminary enumeration. What are we what are we gonna do? I'll keep a couple dashes down here in case we find a few things, you know? What are we gonna do? What are some tools we want to use? Okay, I like it. Someone says go buster, Nikto and Go Buster, W Fuzz and Nick. Okay, I'm gonna use W Fuzz in, in place of Go Buster. Um we're gonna do Nikto, okay. I hear that, I hear that. Um so directory and file fuzzing, as we all know. Um, we're going to look for manual inspection of the source. Yes, uh, at a minimum. We're going to look at robots.txt, you know, .svn entries, um, .ds stores, etc. Um, open the site. Yeah, browser, browsing in the browser. I'll just, we'll do that. Uh, Demi like SQLI, everything else. Check robots, Nikto. Okay, I think we're in a good place. So let's go ahead and get WFuzz running. Uh, since we know it's just port 80 that we are targeting, let's go ahead and just copy this and I'll do an explanation. So WFuzz dash C for color, dash Z for file input method. We want a file. That's going to be for me at least. Ops seclist is the key location. Should be user share seclist on your uh, Kali. Discovery, web content, raft large files.txt. I don't want a bajillion erroneous, you know, not displayed responses. So I'm going to type on hush code hc404 at the target URL. And we're going to copy and paste the same thing here, except in the bottom one, we're going to have raft large directories. And we'll let this run for some time. Uh, we're going to see what we can pick out, what we can find. In the meantime, we're going to open up a web browser, bring it over to this side of the screen. Uh, what was it? 192.168.1.173. And here we are. So we have uh, example.com staff details. Let's check the source. Um, CSS styles display.php, manage.php, search.php. Seems pretty bare bones. <laughs> it definitely seems pretty bare bones. Uh, display all records. Anything up here? No. Okay. Um, maybe a form hidden element, inspect, anything passed along there, uh, negative. All right, it's just a display.php, which apparently does some kind of SQL select, which iterates and pulls down uh, everybody's information. So this could be username information. You know, if this was an engagement, this is user info. Uh, these are, you know, users that go into a user list, emails for phishing attacks, uh, phone numbers for v phishing attacks. Uh, departments for further catered phishing attacks. Lots of, plenty of phishing information on this type of page. Um, let's check out search. If I search for, let's see, hold on, Mary Mo. I just search for Mary, lowercase. We get back Mary Mo. Okay. We'll play with that in a second. Manage. Let's see if we have error message username enumeration. If I type in admin admin, your login name or password is invalid. Okay, what about admin ASDF, random password? 
Okay, so that's a good login message. It doesn't return any extraneous bytes, any leftover bytes uh, that, or extension type of bytes that would be like, oh, that's an invalid username or an invalid password. It's just your login name and password. Um, why do I prefer WFuzz over anything else? <coughs> unlimited power. If I could play that, uh, <laughs> that GIF of unlimited power, that's what I would do um, because you can basically fuzz any form of input um, or you just fuzz anything on the web. It's, it's super, super simple with a lot of uh, functionality. It's got encodings that you can pass along. So if you want to URL encode everything from your word list, you can do that, by the way. Um, you can hush response sizes, you can hush uh, codes, response codes themselves, like a 404, 403 forbiddens, that kind of... You can do a lot, man. You can specify the amount of threads. It's You can submit post data. Yeah, FFUF definitely does that. It's just I got on board with uh, WFuzz and I ended up converting quite a lot of people to WFuzz. It's up to you, whatever you want to use, man. Um, up to you. So I'm going to move over direct, or excuse me, files. Um, and we're going to bring the size down a little bit. So 403, 403, 403, 403, 403, 403 forbidden. And another 403 on a dot .htm. Like, we don't need that. We don't need the dot .ht password that's forbidden. <laughs> Pardon my allergies today. Um, we're going to keep that manage. Dot .php, we do know that the web technology is PHP, so we're going to put that up at the top. That's just important information you want to have in the back burner in your mind for, you know, what if I'm going for codex, what am I going to, what's the language that I'm going to be speaking? Um, so 302 logout 200 config.php. Uh, let's check if we can access a config.php. We certainly can, but it's, it's, it's null here. Maybe, I don't know, we, we check that for like uh, parameter discovery or something. Let's go ahead and see what directories came back. Okay. So really only CSS includes icons and server status. Let's just bring it over to be thorough. Make sure we get all those directories in the web root as well. And remove the icons for now, but we, you know, we have includes potentially, um, you know, welcome.php, dis anything displayed or managed, um, any configs, like I said, a search. There's a lot of good sounding stuff here. Um, and results, it's, these are all good. These are all, you know, every one of these would be tested. So I'm just gonna highlight them all. Um, all of these would be tested here. And yeah, no, remember to view the source loop. Display all records, view page source. What do we got? Any comments left behind? Anything funny? Doesn't look like it. Let's go to the next one. Search, view page source. <laughs> Uh, again, pretty much the same template, very bare bones, uh, and manage. Let's check the admin page. Maybe they left behind something in the comments or in a comment. No, nothing, man. Nothing manually in the source, but good checks, good checks. Um, I know we said we wanted to run Nikto at it, so that's just what we're going to do. I'm going to run Nikto dash dash host at uh, HTTP IP, target IP, um, and we're just going to see what we get back here. Uh, I'll let that run for, you know, a couple of minutes, let it send along a couple dozen thousand, you know, uh, requests. And we'll see if we can find any obscure deep links or, you know, gets that had previous decades have led to compromise. Um, there's logout.php, but no login.php. That appears to be managed, dude. Good question. Uh, logout, yeah. So, I mean, you know. It's finding things here already. Let's start checking for SQLI, you know, still login name or password invalid, you know, tossing a single apostrophe is never going to hurt anybody. Uh, zero results. Zero results. What about termination? Zero results. What about, or let's do the payload we talked about today in the chat, uh, or one equals one. Actually, which is, someone recommended this one. And that works as well. Okay, so that gives us back all the entries. So we definitely have SQL injection. I was gonna say we use this, one or uh, one equals one termination. Um, but it seems that your method is, uh, is superior. Is superior there, unless we do this and this. Nope, 
Yep. Yours is yours worked, man. So this one or one is equal to. I mean, there's multiple variations, um, and I think we could actually uh, zero results. There we go. It might be that I had had a one there. What was I doing? Or one equals one. I'm like, I figured that should have worked. There we go. Okay. So it comes back here, and this is what we have. So we have a SQL injection, but we don't have anything you know, in here uh, to do. So what we're going to do is capture this request. Let's get to capturing it in Burp Suite. I'm just going to turn intercept on, and then we're going to put this with you know, fuzz me uh, and hit submit. We're going to capture the request, select everything in it, right click, and then we're going to copy that request. We're going to drop it, we're going to head into a terminal, and um, we're going to touch uh, request, or req, nano req, paste everything in here. It's going to put, uh, put in a, a bunch of return and new line carriages that are kind of like invisible. Uh, so you just got to control K on that and we'll drop all these extraneous new lines and clean that up. And there we go. Now what we're going to do is SQL map um, dash, let's say request, uh, request, and we'll do dash dash dump dash dash batch. Dash dash dump will essentially say I want whatever output we extract. Um, or exfiltrate here, dash dash batch will be dash yes to everything. Target is Debian and it's running PHP. I'm going to say the DBMS just from experience is probably MySQL. Um, so we can clear up a lot of testing and traffic with just that alone. Um, and we'll also see if we can dump any databases that it's able to find. Uh, let's go ahead and make sure we don't let our Nikto scan go to, uh, go to waste. This is enumeration for later, you know what I mean? We're going to copy that. We're going to bring that back. We're going to put it in here. Um, and, you know, it found a bunch of good stuff, nothing particularly out of the ordinary. A um, bunch of information findings, CGI directories, valid junk HTTP methods, config.php. Um, CSS includes, so nothing, nothing too, too nuts, but, uh, you know, hey, we got it. So let's go ahead and exit out of this terminal and hit enter. Okay, um, da, 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 post parameter search does not appear to be dynamic. What do we have here? Ba, 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 ba. Does not seem to be injectable, I think. Let's nano the request. We have an extra line here. Let's try that now. Okay, okay, there we go. Particular, yes it is, but for demonstration purposes, I'm using it here. Uh, just for speed, um, I'm doing it here. If this was the exam and you saw that you know, uh, apostrophe or one is equal to one termination statement, gave you back an SQLI like this, that would be your cue to load up Burp Suite and start doing some manual exploitation. Um, with that being said though, we do have admin and a hash, so I'm gonna nano hashes. Dude, yes, I think, I, I'm seeing the chat go nuts. Yes, we, we just, free, we're just, this is just how we do things. I don't know what to tell you. We just, we just hack, man, nano users, admin um what else did we get back okay a gold mine um it looks like of uh, phone numbers emails request dates um can i what what oh here we are here we are this is why i tacked on dbs database names information schema okay so this was the staff database so we still need to exfil from the users so this is really easy i'm just going to tack on dash d for the database and specify users and if this is what I think it is, it is a complete and total dump of all the users on the machines with their passwords. Holy cow, dude. So, um, yeah, so there, uh, that's, that's that. We're gonna touch creds, we're gonna nano the credentials, and I'm just gonna paste this in flat as is. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is kind of just manually, uh, 
well, let's 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 do a little bit of bash for fun, right? Let's clear this out in cat cruds. Let's cat cruds, uh, right? And then we can pipe that to a cut with a delimiter of a space, and we'll say field two, field three. Oh, that doesn't bring enough back. Hmm. Just want to see. I I feel like there'd be a a much better way. Um, what about a delimiter of a pipe? Hey, that brings them all back. Okay, three. All right, that's all the usernames. So we want this username list to be free. So I'm gonna nano users, and under admin, I'm just gonna basically remove all white space. I'm gonna add them uh, users. I use uh, Adam a lot. Um, it's just a really quality uh, hackable text editor. So when we're using these, we want a clean list. What I mean by that is that there's no extraneous spaces, guys. Uh, no spaces left over and no before or after the username. So we want to make sure they're totally clean, otherwise things will not work. Um, see, look at these spaces here. Terrible, terrible, terrible. So we gotta we gotta go through these, you know, tidy it up, trim the tree. Um, there it is. And we can get rid of that. And I'm just using shift and right arrow followed by the backspace. Um, and, you know, we'll get through this, but I'm pretty excited that we just got a list of a whole bunch of usernames, so we're definitely, like, on the right road. Um, we're, we're not going down the wrong road, per se. Uh, yeah, said can help, absolutely, um, but said can be a little confusing uh, for newcomers. Um, let's see here. So we're just going to keep removing. It's, it's the premise here of having no spaces that is what's important. That's a little take home there. Um, all right, we're good. So we're going to save that out, and that's good. Now we need to go ahead and grab the passwords. So I'm going to cut that, maybe field five. Was it field six? Okay, so here's all the passwords. Excellent. Um, shift end, regex or vim, the data scientist part. Yeah, pretty much that, man. <laughs> pretty much cleaning up the data um, just as much as possible, making it really nice and tidy, um, no, no extraneous bytes, no bad bytes, um, and, and so on and so forth. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Let's get that back in Adam, and let's make sure there's nothing. Yep, see, there's some trailings there. Like, wouldn't that be terrible if we uh, didn't have, or if we had passwords with spaces in them, or after them, that would be unfortunate. Unfortunate. Password spraying time? Uh, not yet. I like your thought process. Uh, yeah, no, this is, this is supremo, like, loot. This is good stuff. This is what we will get, you know what I mean? This is what we go for. This is our target, just database exfil, Usernames, passwords, hashes, all the juice. Um, and can you show the SQL ma map? You yeah, I can show you. One sec. Uh, as long as you have the request correct that we moved over from Burp Suite, I can certainly show you. So I'll save that out, close out of this, um, and we have a, a clean one there. So the request that I did with SQL map, or the command, is right here. So dash r request, um, and here is our request file. By the way, we pulled this over from Burp Suite. Uh, we said SQL map, we want you to dump everything to the terminal, uh, not to some output file, dash dash batch for everything to be yes. Um, that way we're not hitting yes, enter, yes, enter, so on and so forth. Our target machine was Debian, so we decided that the chances are it's probably MySQL running on it. So we specified that and sped up the process drastically. Um, and then also DBS, because we wanted to see all databases that existed. And the one we targeted after our second injections attempt uh, came to be uh, dash D users, which X filled. So there you go. And uh, now that we have that, let's go ahead and take a look back at this. Do we have SSH? We do not. So we have a bunch of credentials, but we don't have SSH. Um, let's go ahead and say that we found a SQL injection 
on search.php. Let's, let's document our steps here. We have a SQL injection on search.php was this or one is equal to one termination statement as such. And uh, what else did we have? We had SQL map. I'll, I'm going to go ahead and copy the command utilized for you guys. This is just for notation. You know what I mean? This will not be permitted on the exam, obviously. Um, don't need to restate the obvious, but sometimes you do. Um, so that's the request that we had. Um, we cleaned up any spaces for usernames and passwords. And we have a full username and pass list um, that are all pretty much rocking and rolling and ready to go. So we don't have error message username enumeration. One says, can we Hydra? We could. Uh, my scan found port SSH port 22, did it? Dude, did you find 22? nmap-p 22 at target IP? No, that's filtered for me. Maybe check and see if it's open or filtered. It's filtered for me, man. Look for IT user and sign in. I like where you're going with this. So let's go ahead and grab, um, I think we had the admin hash separately, cat hashes. We just need to crack this password. I'm gonna head over to crackstation.net um, and I'm just gonna paste it in to see if it's been cracked before. Um, apparently I can't solve this. I think that counts as a bicycle. <laughs> this is funny. Uh, this counts as a traffic light. Right? Um, that's a motorcycle. <laughs> that's a motorcycle. Okay, I'm not a robot. And crack hashes. And we got it. So, tortoball or transorbital one. Uh, we're going to nano passwords and we're going to throw that right up at the top. Uh, that is a known working password. So, now that we have a known working password uh, or a known cracked password, uh, let's take a look at the chat. Um, first time chat from stirdude98 says, can someone teach me stuff? Yeah, I can teach you all the things, man. Uh, offensive security can teach you all the things as well. Um, so let's see, is this also susceptible to cross-site request forgery? Potentially, potentially. I didn't see any PHPs that were indicative of user creation. Otherwise we could probably go for a CSRF and attempt to um, add ourselves as an administrator and, but there's, it's not, it's, it's, it's just a flat, you know, uh, a flat username and password field of which if we cat passwords and we bring over trans orbital one, hit the submit button and we're logged in as the administrator. Welcome.php. This is the one that we found actually in our cherry tree output. So I'm going to go down here and we're going to underline this. Um, because we just found something with that. I don't know if you guys were able to catch it, but we logged in with admin and transorbital one, brought us to forward slash welcome.php, and what did we find out of the gate? File does not exist. That doesn't sound right to me. That doesn't sound right to me at all. I think there's something going on here. Display records, let's see what other functionality we might have. Is it down at the bottom of these? No. What about the manage? Manage has file does not exist. We can add a record maybe. Okay, also file does not exist. Manage, search. Let's go back to our welcome and let's try something. If we go to welcome.php and uh, what we're gonna do is something known as parameter discovery. So we're gonna paste a question mark here and we're gonna put in fuzz is equal to what would be, well, it's looking for files. Seeing as we know that a file could be suggestive like f, or a parameter named file or whatever it might be. Um, I'm going to go for like just some data um, or like, let's say, yeah, let's see. Let's just try some data first, you know, we're testing. Let's see, export URL is equal to this. So we have HTTP, the target IP on port 80, uh, forward slash welcome.php, um, dash or a question mark, fuzz is equal to some data. So what we're gonna need though, we're not, we're not done here. Um, what we're gonna need is to intercept a request and acquire a valid session ID. 
we're going to need to do uh, kind of like session writing with wfuzz. We'll turn intercept on, and with a valid session, we'll hit refresh. Then we're going to copy this over, PHP session ID, right? We're going to copy this over, and we're going to say dash D, um, do, 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 dash D here, include PHP sesh ID at the target URL, and, oh no, wait, what am I doing? Export, that needs to be this. And then we're gonna call upon, I have my common here for authenticated fuzzing. Um, I was getting ahead of myself. But authenticated fuzzing directories, whatever it may be. Um, sure, authenticated file fuzzing. Um, I'll paste that in and we'll just replace uh, p param equals value with php uh, session id is equal to, and what did we have? This string here. Um, okay, target URL, we're going to avoid 404s, and what we're going to do is look for parameter existence instead. So the one in secless that we're going to be utilizing is opt secless discovery web content burp parameter names dot text. Burp parameter names dot text. So I'm going to copy this over and paste it in here and uh, hit the return key, and that looks good. And that's a lot of 302s, so we're gonna hush the code uh, also of a 404 and a comma to add a 302. And let's see how it goes. So nothing came back uh, to Grave Misfortune. Um, let's see here. Did we maybe do something wrong? Don't think so. Unless we did, which is always a possibility. So what do we have? We have fuzz is equal to some data. So we're gonna be fuzzing in and off of that. What if I just change this to like Etsy password? Why, instead of making it some data, let's make it Etsy password. Um, so if there is a file vulnerability, it may find it, it may not. I have a feeling it has to do with my PHP session ID. Oh, you know what, it should say cookie. Let's try like cookie. No, unless that's dash, maybe I'm confusing it with curl. We're doing this on the fly, on the fly. Did I spell PHP session ID right? I did. Um, let's see. Let's see what people say here. Port 22 confirmed with nmap hcv t4 vv open. Interesting. Um, this export, it's like curl or it's something else. This is uh, exporting environment variables, right? So one person says to fuzz through burp. I have no problem with this. Um, I don't. I see why we couldn't. I don't. I don't see why we couldn't do that. Uh, but why don't we learn something? Why don't we learn about authenticated fuzzing? Uh, so if we Google wfuzz and authenticated uh, fuzzing, let's see what we get. And obviously not have intercept on because we don't need intercept on. Uh, intercept is off, just forward everything out. Um, let's see, medium.com, how to use wfuzz. Or was it dash b and I put a dash d? Oh my god. Was that the argument? No, dash d is for post data, I figured. So if that's the case, then let's try dash B. Let's do dash B here, PHP slash ID. And let's see what that does. Holy cannoli, okay, we have a lot back. So instead of a 302, that's what was happening. <laughs> um, so let's just recap. Here's, let's echo the URL. This is our target URL. Welcome.php, we're checking for parameter existence. So that's gonna be fuzz is equal to some file that might exist on the system, traversal, etc. Yeah, it needs to be a dash B. So we've got that there. And then uh, we specify uh, kind of like session writing PHP sesh ID, and there's our URL. We hit fuzz, and I am pretty sure that we need to drop what looks like 963 bytes. So we're going to dash HH 963 bytes dash dash hh and there we go um 
so dash dash hc of 404 dash dash hh of 963 and we do have one called file now that makes sense because we see an error message down here at the bottom of welcome.php that says file does not exist so we supplied it with etsy password and i'm getting a good feeling at 300 at 3316 characters we're going to provide file is equal to dot dot slash dot dot slash etsy password and there we go we're going to right click view page source and here is the password file we're just going to copy this to our enumeration right click copy and uh, i'm just going to bring this under cherry tree under other we have the password file of the target machine slash etsy password uh, we'll actually paste this as plain text there it is and lo and behold all those users that we found from the database um, are are there like they're all there um, but we don't have access to SSH. And somehow or another, somebody managed to access SSH. I don't know how you did that. Um, maybe it was an in-map scanner or something like this. Um, but the intended route is kind of like this. Does anybody know of a way um, that we could own this machine right now? Like, if I've specified to determine how can we, in fact, roll back the question, how can we specify, yeah, I see log poisoning. Okay, how can we specify log poisoning? What are we going to look for? Which, which, what are files that we want to see? Yeah, find out if it's LFI. How can we verify if this is LFI or not? Just tell me that. How can we access .log? How can we verify, though, if this is a local file inclusion ready for code execution? versus a directory traversal finding. I've shown you guys this technique a couple of times. PHP info negative. PHP info firm no. If we know that it's Debian, we know we can go to var www.html and we know that there's a welcome.php. If we try to re-include welcome.php, let's see what happens. Okay, so it's kind of just loading. Let's try uh, var www.html index.php and make sure that intercept is off. And still nothing, but it is, it is kind of perpetually loading. This might be indicative of a local file inclusion of execution happening as opposed to, um, as opposed to being just a directory traversal finding. So now that we verified that that's an LFI um, because of how long it took to load this instead of dumping all the data and the contents inside, um, what we're going to do is try log poisoning, var log apache to access.log. Do we have access to access.log? I don't think we do, man. I don't think we do. Yeah, I don't think we do at all have access to that. We'll let it go, but I am pretty sure that we do not. Uh, there is there another file anybody can think of? Um, if SSH, let's say there's so many users and they're accessing this machine, wouldn't you say that it's a bit suggestive or a bit likely that SSH does exist? Despite a full port scan, um, a clean port scan across not showing anything, some people say IDRSA files. Let's try that. That would be forward slash home. Let's find a user that exists. Let's say janitor exists. Forward slash janitor forward slash dot SSH forward slash ID underscore RSA. And it doesn't look like we're going to be able to access that. That sounds like another permission denied to me. Etsy password. Ah. Did I break it? I think I think we broke it. Manage. I'm already logged in. Welcome.php. File is equal to Etsy password. Okay, there's that. RFI, yeah, do we have RFI? Let's find out. HTTP 192.168.1.7 on port 8000. And let's see if we get a 200 OK. Port 8000. Let's check. All right, we didn't get any response here, so it doesn't look like we have remote file inclusion, but I like the way you're thinking. 
Could we modify our user agent? Could we modify our user agent with this LFI and do something like dot, dot slash, dot, dot slash, a bunch of traversal strings, <clears throat> and access forward slash proc self, E N V I R O N, and proc self environment? Doesn't look like it. Doesn't look like it at all, buddy. So there is a little something that I would like to teach you. It's about an application known as Knock Daemon or Damien. And Knock D has its own config. So if we were to fuzz this for and put in something like fuzz here and then use, I don't know, Seclis local file inclusion, um, we might find that we access this kind of a file. So we're gonna do dot dot slash 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 dot dot slash. And what we're going to say instead is this would be, uh, well, I believe this would fall under Etsy. Knock, because it's not a log, so it won't be var log. Knock d dot config. Did I lose it again? I think the machine hates me. I'm pretty certain that this machine hates me. I'm fairly certain. It does not want to load. I think I think uh, I think we broke it, and I may have to restart the machine. That's fine with me. Um, I personally do not mind, but I would like. Let's just keep this in our notes for a moment. Under eighty, we do have a confirm that forward slash welcome dot php file equal to. Etsy password, we have confirmed LFI, not directory traversal. Yeah, I think we accidentally de DDoS or denial of service ourselves, yeah. Uh, blank file, display all records, anything? All right, so this is a live recording. Uh, what do we do in the event that a machine is broken? What do we do? Okay, we close out of that. We go over to the machine. We close this. We power off the machine. And uh, we open up VirtualBox. We uh, go back to DC9, down here DC9, and hit Start. And then close VirtualBox once this is open. And then we revisit it once it's booted. <laughs> we don't call... We don't call help desk. No. <laughs> Calling help desk, crying. No. Uh, firm no. We're gonna we're gonna continue on, my friends. So, uh, open a support ticket. I love it, man. I love it. Open browser. All right. Let's see if it even wants to behave. I think Burp Suite might have even uh, keeled over. Let's kill name Burp. Sweet. PSAUX scrap dash I burp. Uh, kill name burp sweet pro. It does not want to go. Let's try this. Java. There we go. Nope. It is. It is. Oh, wait. I got a kill name job here. So this is this is live. Um, there we go. And let's get Burp Suite back open. Sorry about that, guys. Technical difficulties. Technical difficulties, but we're back. It's reloading. No worries. Thank you, JX Crow. Yeah, dear help desk, so I'm trying to hack one of your servers, and this just happened. I kind of need some. <laughs> That is pretty funny. Uh, that is actually hilarious. So what we're going to do here is just boot this up, intercept is off, open browser. I'm going to cancel out of this real quick. And then let's get that IP and see if it was the same on DHCP. And it should be. Yeah. And manage, login as admin, cat passwords, 
transorbital one, and we're logged in. We're back at welcome.php. I'm gonna copy the link from here, and we're gonna go over it again. So we have, um, da -da -da, we have this right here. Uh, knock D. That's the knock daemon config. So port knocking is like a way of being able to hit a specific port and then another and then another or any sequence number that you choose. And once that knock D detects on the network that this machine has received, you know, a SEN um, or a TCP SEN packet on those ports, then what it'll do is open up a specified service or perform some operation. So if we look at the config file, we have glory, my friends. So look, th this is the open SSH sequence right here. Like this is it. Um, in fact, I'm just going to put in that we were able to get the open sequence as this. And I'll paste that as plain text. And then I think for fun, we can just, uh, for fun, we might even be able to just let's do a closed one as well. And this is, this is one of my favorites because it's just so cool. So we need to get SSH open. So we're going to right click, paste this plain text. And what I'm going to do is go to sirensecurity.io. This is actually the best place that I know to go to. That's, you know, going to help. So all posts. And then I have one here um, specifically titled um, port knocking because that is the type of attack that we are going to carry out. Port knocking, and you thought nothing was here. Knock, knock, who's there? It's doors and corners, kid. So seems that Siren has this little script for us. We're just gonna right click the script and hit copy, and we're gonna touch give me ssh.shell. And then we're gonna nano give me ssh.shell. Um, I'm gonna disable SSHing in straight away, um, but we are gonna need the open sequence. And from the knock D, the open sequence is this. Let's copy it over. And we'll do an explanation of what's happening. So for each of these iterations, Nmap is going to perform a single uh, with max retries of zero um, and a host timeout of 201, a single uh, little send packet. It's going to flick it um, at the target IP right here. Um, for dollar sign $x with port dollar sign $x. And dollar sign $x is going to be the, se the sequence that we uncovered in Etsy knock D. So one, two, three, it's gonna iterate through each one. Um, and then we'll see how it goes. Uh, chmod755 give me shell and dot slash give me SSH. So boom, boom, boom. Now how can we verify if SSH is open? Nmap-p22 at the target IP. That is so hot. Oh, now it's open, guys. Now we have access to SSH. Um, first time chat from Sinbatter says sirensecurity.io forward slash blog forward slash blog archive all posts. Yes. Good looking out, buddy. Good looking out, Sinbad. So we, we have SSH now. Somebody recommended a specific type of attack earlier, but we did not have SSH open. So yeah, I mean, we're not even gonna, we're not even gonna hesitate. Dash L users, we're gonna use our users file, dash P, our passwords exfiltrated file at target SSH protocol um, at target IP. And we're gonna let that go. So we're just gonna let Hydra kind of run and do its work. And we got it, guys. We got it. Boys and girls, we got it. It's, uh, it's, it's good. Things are good right now. Um, so we're gonna export IP actually equal to 192.168.1.173. And we're gonna SSH, well, let's touch uh, SSH creds. 
I'm going to touch an additional file, SSH creds. Anything in here is going to be specific to SSH. And we've got Chandler B, uh, you are a god. Thank you very much, Chandler B. Um, and let's see, Joey T. So Joey T. And proper credential format with a password of password with a zero because super elite. And a janitor, it looks like, has access to the machine as well. And we're just not going to read out that password. But the fact is, we have SSH access now. So what we're going to do um, is SSH to the, da, 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 we're going to do it as, let's cat SSH creds. Who do we want to go in first as? Let's SSH as janitor um, at the target IP. Yes, and we're just going to copy this. Still not reading it out loud. Do apologize. Uh, but that is their password. So we're in, and, and, and that's, that's bling bling. Like, that is it. Um, we have made it happen. We have done it. Uh, you can try admin with the password. Yeah, Christy laughing. We are in. We're in, guys. Like, this is, this is bling bling right here. Dark Riders got the idea. This is, this is bling bling, dude. That's, that's compromise at this point. Um, so let's just check out the home directory. Are we in, like, our bash or something? No? Let's, I'm going to use my breakout command. Um, I'm going to export all paths. I'm going to export a term export ll it's a stable shell already because it's ssh so i can control c as much as i want but look at all the users that are here um whoa baby that's a lot so strange my version of dc9 didn't need port knocking that is peculiar i will not deny it that is peculiar um this box just gets better doesn't it subterminal i'm telling you we 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 really uh, have cracked the code with this one as far as quality machines are concerned. This one is glorious. Um, it's the machine that doesn't stop giving. Can we cat config.php? Okay, we have DB info. We need to just let's, let's calm down. Let's mysql user db user p password. Um, and we're in with basically root level privileges into the database. Let's show databases. <laughs> And we have users there and staff. So just checking to see if there was anything. I mean, our SQL map would have come up with it. But if we were manually, you know, doing these things, we might want to check for extra verification. Um, you know, let's let's use users. What else did we have in here? Select all. Well, show tables. Show me the tables first. I want to see what we got. It's just user details. So select all from user details. Um, and there it is. That's that's everybody, baby. That's everybody. Um, now, we're a real user, and what do we do when we're a real user on the machine every single time? What is one of the first things we want to try? Yeah, I'll do a net stat, buddy. Don't worry. Immediately after this. sudo-l. Correct. Password for janitor. Let's, uh, let's just... Uh, copy it over <clears throat> and it looks like huh SSH cards make sure we clean copy and paste it at least all right sorry user janitor may not run sudo on DC9 let's check the network netstat dash ant up um, or netstat is not there or if I could spell netstat Okay, well, netstat isn't here. What about ss? What about ss-tonlp? Clean that up a bit. All right, 3306 off 1207. So it doesn't look like we need to, you know, forward anything out, any services, um, sudoers, crontab. Yes, I like what you guys are thinking. But um, let's also go ahead and check our home directory. Let's, let's check, actually, for root, dash dash color is equal to auto. Um, you know, down through the system level stuff here. I see journal dev, u dev. That's pretty nice. Um, user sbin cron. Okay, so we have cron. That's a potentiality. Here's our knock d or knock daemon. 
uh, that we were able to utilize a specific sequence to, to compromise the machine. Um, and let's check uh, world writables, var temp, nothing really important in there, temp, nothing really important in there, dev shim, same, what about opt? Okay, opt has things, scripts, permission denied, dev stuff, test.py, okay, so this is definitely a thing. This is definitely a thing. Uh, CD build, CD test, dot slash test, slash file directory. Okay. Well then, we're gonna maybe have to come back to this. In fact, I have a notion, so to speak. Suids and guids, that's what I like to see. I love to see these recommendations. Suids and guids. Anything going on there? Any PKXIC? Any PoonKit? Uh, doesn't look like it, man. Just pseudo change shell, like SSH key sign. No. What about maybe groups? Can we get anything fancy going on there? Uh, wall, check password, expiry, BSD write. Cron tabs, change, or change age. Nothing, nothing going on with, with that either. Um, let's go to the home directory. Let's go back to janitor. There was something in here. Okay, so in light of recent, of recent events, I'm just going to stay out of the politics, but we are going to uh, progress on the machine and uh, kind of just traverse into that directory. And if we cat passwords found on post-it notes.txt, we have a series of passwords. Yes. Bling, bling. Indeed, like we, we've got it, dude. So we need to nano our passwords file and effective immediately uh, get all of these cleaned up with, make sure there's no spaces, you know, just checking there's no spaces, no spaces, no spaces. Okay, and now we're gonna go ahead and Hydra from the outside. Why are we gonna Hydra from the outside? We could use something like switch user crack or sue crack um, but I want to show you the value of Hydra, actually, from the outside. If you're able to verify, like, let's look at home, and there's 20, 30 users in here. Holy cow, you know? Or a dozen. Like, I'm not going to go through every iteration when there's a tool that'll do that for me. So I'm going to just Hydra-L users, the same thing, dash P passwords, with our updated passwords list at the target IP, um, which is not existent because I didn't specify 192.168.1. Dot... 173. And we're going to let that go, and hopefully we can gain access to a user with pseudo permissions. We'll see. Somebody says the mail. CD to... We already got one. Uh, var mail. Nothing in mail. Nothing here. Nothing in mail. But we do have Fred F. So thank you, Fred. Uh, we're going to nano SSH creds, and we're going to have Fred... F with, I'm just going to copy this. And what I'm going to do is switch user inside my current existing session. Um, and we'll switch user to Fred F, provide the password, and give myself some color here. Make sure my uh, paths are all good. Not leaving that to chance. And it looks like we're good, man. Like, this is this is looking pretty good. Let's go to the home directory specified by the environment variable of home, dollar sign home. Can you go on any .ssh files? I like it. So let's go to home. This is what uh, God Milk might say, is go to the home directory and just do an lslsar and forward slash home. Permission denied, though. That's what we're going to run into. I do see private keys, you know, but that's in Fred F, which we just got, fortunately. But everything else is going to be perms denied. Good thinking, though, particulate. Good thinking. Excellent. Um, let's go back to Fred F. And let's try a pseudo-l. <laughs> we can certainly do this, man. We are getting there. OK, root will be ours. Root will be ours, I promise you. So we can run, it turns out, forward slash opt dev stuff dist test. Um, remember this? Remember uh, this binary? Turns out we can actually run that with pseudo privileges um, here. So what if I just 
run dot slash test. Okay, usage, usage, usage. Python test.py read append. Let's make sure we know what we're doing. It looks like it's just going to read a file um, and then append to that file from something. But let's, let's see, if we look at test.py, okay, so this is just usage, but let's see here what's happening. F is equal to open sys.argv. First argument is read, output uh, f.read. F dot open, or f is equal to open then, sys.argv2 for append. Okay, so it's just read, append, and then write to output and close. So it's it's just going to append. Um, welcome, shellcrunch37. What is DC9? DC9 is the last one. <laughs> it's the last one. Um, so what we need to do at this point is we're going to need to get fancy. I like what JX Crow is thinking. Let's list out the password or the permissions on Etsy password. So we don't have write permissions to it, but we can append. We can append with pseudo privileges, with root privileges, we can append. So what we will do is just that. I'm going to make a payload. We're going to go to var temp, and we're going to touch, uh, you know, offsec in this directory. And because this is going to be the file to read from. Then I'm going to go to sirensecurity.io, and I'm going to go to Linux privilege escalation. And we're going to go to search for iHeart Hacking. iHeart Hacking, here it is. And we're going to copy all of this Etsy password format um, kind of just out to this file. So we're going to echo all of this out to offsec. Now let's do some explaining. Um, what we've done is we've echoed all this stuff out to a file. This is indicative of that right arrow. Um, but if we cat Etsy password, you'll see that this is in the same format. We have a user, right? And then we have, um, instead of a shadowed password, we have an unshadowed password. Um, that, we, that means we can make effective use of it and we can essentially switch to that user. Um, zero, zero uh, for UID, uh, group ID, uh, be root, root, siren out of home siren ben bash so what we should be able to do is sudo dash l and remember we can run that test binary out of opt dev stuff dis test test so let's copy this and let's sudo whew, this opt dev stuff test or dis test test um and there okay so read append and we're going to do var temp offsec and we're going to append that to forward slash etsy password let's check out the comments sudo should be able yep it is does the share does that share or take over root um it emulates basically it's just switching uid a gid to zero uh, whether it's called siren or root or you know whether it's called funksec, it's going to switch, your, the kernel's going to see that your UID is equal to zero, and that's what's important. So we're going to run that, and it looks like it executed fine. Let's cat slash Etsy password, and there is our appended, because we read through the Python file, it's going to append. We've appended a user to it. Now if we switch user to siren, SU siren, and I heart, Hacking. Did I not specify it? No. Switch user siren. I heart hacking. It seems that it's failed. What have we done? What have we done wrong? What did we do wrong? Hmm. Let me think. Echo didn't work. No, because it's there, unless, let's go back to sirensecurity.io. Linux privilege escalation. And we'll type in, I just, I heart. And here it is. Um, we're going to copy everything as is and make sure it's 100%. The user, again, really doesn't matter. Ah, yeah, no, it definitely, UTM, 
through zero. Yeah, no, it got kind of like truncated. So I think that's because we did it. Let's cut off sec. Yeah. All right, we're going to copy. We're going to rm off sec out of this and touch off sec again. Then we're going to echo this out to var temp off sec. And we're going to do this in double quotes. Echo that out to var temp off sec. Cat off sec. Interesting. But it looks good. T9L. And then we will sudo. Um, what if we change this over to offsec? So we can switch user to offsec. And then offsec, offsec, there we go. And now what if we sudo and run that and then read this and append to Etsy password, cat Etsy password, switch user to offsec, I heart hacking. Interesting. Doesn't seem to be working. Do you think single quotes? Someone says single quotes. Did we miss something here? You think maybe the four or the, I don't see any backslash. All right, all right, we'll do it how Siren said to do it on her blog. Our temp offsec. And we'll just call this offsec two. <laughs> offsec two. Offsec two to var temp offsec. And then we'll append it. Switch user to offsec two. I heart hacking. Oh, let's go back. Could be. We'll see. Ha ha ha! So we just gotta trust Siren, man. I guess that's the nature. The, the the thing of the story here is we just gotta trust Siren. So if, if Siren says to echo out, well, that's what we do. So, um, bling bling, we have got it. Uh, that's that's what's up, dude. That is what's up because we have been through all of these machines. DC one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, guys. We this is DC nine. This is the last one of the DC series. Wasn't that awesome? I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. That was a great machine um, for sure. So what we're going to do is we're going to cat the flag. Nice work. Congratulations. You've done so well. Big thank you to uh, Motley, Motley Crew. They are inspirational bunch of fellows. Sure. Oh, I smell a bit, but just kidding. Sadly, all things must come to an end, and this will be the last ever challenge in the DC series. So long, and thanks for all the fish. Nice little ode to Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So, um, absolutely epic, says he he Heox AC. I mean, yeah, so many people talking about that dash. We got it. That is the bling bling, if I can do it one more time. So we cat the flag, dot text, we if config, IPA, host name, ID, bring it in. Bring it in, team. Shift, print screen. Congratulations. And you would include this in your formal report, as always. But that's it. We have done it, you guys. We have done it. We have done it. Through all of these skills, through all of this trials and tribulations, we have done it, and we have prevailed. I'm going to head over to offensivesecurity.com forward slash webinars. And I do believe we may have something coming up. Yep, there's the Ask Me Anything. Um, and you can go ahead and watch that on demand. Um, that was March 23rd, and it is March 25th. So yeah, you can go ahead and listen to that. Absolutely. Um, and check out any of our courses, certifications. You guys know the drill. I'll be back here Friday, uh, 5 p.m. Eastern, as always. And... Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Human, human, one, two, three. Thank you guys for being here and uh, being so regular. Congratulations to everybody uh, that recently acquired their OSCP certification. You guys are freaking offensive security certified professionals now, and that is not something to shake a stick at. So good work and congratulations to everybody who's gotten that. 
Very proud of you, and uh, keep up the good work. Rod Kelly says, thank you, Siren. You rock. Christy, thank you, Siren. Happy weekend. Of course, happy weekend to all of you. Saturday and Sunday are coming up, so enjoy that. Enjoy that. And to Zero Bit Air, don't worry if you miss the stream. This is going to be up in a few hours on our YouTube channel. So check out our official YouTube channel. Um, KFB33 says, thanks, Siren. You've motivated me, man. That nearly brings a tear to my eye. Thank you, um, because that is what I'm here to do. Fist bump indeed. So happy weekend, and uh, I'll catch you guys. Maybe maybe we do Keoptrix next week. Maybe we start the Keoptrix series. I don't think we have that archived on YouTube. So by all means, I think we might continue with the Keoptrix series. Um, but you guys have a wonderful weekend, and happy hacking, intruders. <laughs>